Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan. I work on used generators and if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna show you how to restore the fuel system on an inverter generator. So uh, I bought this generator for about $50 and already when I opened the door, I can smell how old the gas is. I took a sniff on from the tank and I almost passed out, it was ridiculously bad. So what this generator needs, it's, it needs its carburetor to be clean, but it also needs the valve back there. You see that over there? It also probably needs that valve to be checked to make sure that the fuel actually flows to the carburetor. So what I'm gonna show you guys today is how to remove this carburetor. So I'm gonna set the camera right here. And uh, first thing, you wanna loosen up the bolts. Well, this in this case, the handle and the bolts all the way around so that you can pull this lid. So that's already loose. Speed up the video a little bit. Next, we're gonna pull the air box. So you just pop that like that. And uh, it should come out the bottom as well. So there we go, guys. Filter and the lid. And uh, next up, you're gonna grab a 10 millimeter wrench because you're gonna need to pull the intake bolts right there. Okay, so there's one on the outside and one on the inside. So after you pull both of those 10 millimeters uh, nuts, the rest of the box should come out. And then you have this gasket right here. Okay. So this goes in between the box and the choke mechanism. Next up, you're going to slide the carburetor forward a little bit. You slide this forward together with the carburetor. And then let me show you here, this is very important. There is a pin, you see that pin right there? That pin aligns with that hole on the choke mechanism. So when you go put this back together, make sure you insert the pin there and then you slide everything together like that. See, that way when you operate your choke, you open and close it. It's pretty easy. So I'm gonna slide that out of the way. And then the carburetor itself, there okay guys last thing you have to pull this two Phillips head screws on top of the carburetor to remove the throttle motor it's a stepping motor and the best way to do this is just to disconnect it and the best way to do this is just to remove the screws not lose them like me found it don't be like me and drop that little screw now do the rest of the last one there we go and now we're ready to slide the stepping motor out so you just carefully pry it out of there Just like so. Make sure not to turn that shaft, it's very important that you leave it alone. All right? So next, I'm gonna just unplug these hoses. And now we're ready to put this on the bench and clean it up. Okay guys, just before we start, um, there is this mechanism up here where the shaft from the stepping motor connects and it has um, a little spring. So just make sure with a screwdriver, carefully that you put that back down so it accidentally doesn't pop out because if you lose that screw you yeah I don't even know where you can order just a screw so be careful make sure you don't lose that and we're not gonna mess with that part of the carburetor thankfully so things you're gonna need first of all make sure you have eye protection because I sprayed brake clean inside a carburetor and it backfired into my eyes before and it was a horrible experience. So you don't want that happening to you, so make sure you wear eye protection. All right, so we're gonna grab our 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna break this loose.
I'm gonna grab a flathead screwdriver and make sure it actually fits snugly into the hole because we're gonna go ahead and pull the main jet. So you're just gonna turn that like a screw. And there are two pieces in there is the jet and then this other tube with a few holes on it. So two things should come out. So I don't know if you can see, there's a brass tube in there. So when it doesn't come out, when I tap it, I just push it from the top. Voila, they both fell out by themselves. Okay, so next, if it's if it looks like this, the O-ring, if it just wants to come out by itself, I recommend that you do take it off for the next step. But some of them are so stuck in there and they look so dry that if you try and pull it, you'll break it and then you're gonna have to go online and order parts, which is gonna delay your rebuild process. So next, you wanna back off the screw right here. Okay, this is, this is a stop for the throttle. And here's our last jet. This is our pilot jet or idle jet, like I like to call it. So you're gonna pry that out carefully. And there you go. It's oily in there for some reason. So now we have our carburetor completely disassembled and we're gonna start spraying. So first things first, you wanna spray here where the needle valve goes. And make sure we don't have any gas on the intake and make sure not to spray near this thing because uh, brake clean destroys rubber including your gloves so next you're gonna spray in this little hole right here and that goes right up here okay it's very important that's good uh, next, I'm going to spray right here. should come out right there by the throttle. Next, I'm going to... Next, I'm going to spray right here. Okay. See, it's occasions like that where brake clean might go into your eyes. It's really not fun, guys. Okay. So that seems like it did it. Next up, we're going to move on to our jets. So this jet right here, I can already see that it's slightly clogged. So what I like to do is I like having one of these uh, needle things and just poke through it like so. This one's big enough to where it allows me to go all the way through. But that certainly helps the brake clean. Break through the barrier of crud a little easier. Just like that. Some generators might have one small enough that this won't fit, so don't worry and jam it in there. The size of the hole determines how much fuel goes into the generator, so you want to make sure to leave that as original. Next, um, it's a little bit tedious, but I like to poke on every single one of these. Uh, I believe some of them are bigger than others. but I just take my time. Yeah, the bottom ones are definitely smaller. I like to take my time and do all of them. Okay, next I'm gonna insert my brake clean here. And this is the part where you need the glasses for because this is gonna spray everywhere. You clog the top. And you just make sure you use pressure to push all the crud out if there was any. So I'll do it one last time just to be safe. It's good. I'll just give it a quick wipe. And last we're gonna do our idle jet, our pilot jet. And this one has a really tiny hole in there so don't expect anything to go through. You're just kind of helping loosen up the crud. And the way I like to test this one is I plug the holes on one side and I put the other one on the other side and I hope that it comes out of the little one. 
I don't know if you guys can see, but it's not it's not coming out of the small one here. So that will definitely prevent this generator from running. That's when your generator idles poorly. It's because that guy is clogged. So let me try the other way around. There you go. You guys see that? I unclogged it with the pressure. So it seems like it's good to go now. Yeah, this guy was definitely clogged. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy back in there. And uh, we're gonna put our screw back in. And I noticed one thing, I noticed that the screw was out of adjustment when I pulled it out. I've done enough of these generators to where I remember where it's supposed to sit and it was too far out. It was somewhere around there and you're supposed to have a little bit of, of it sticking out the other side. So that's what I'm going to do. There you go guys. A little bit sticking out. So next up. Actually, before I finish up, I'm just going to clean the inside here. Some really old gas in there. So we're going to drop this guy in. Like so. Next, our main jet. Tight, but not crazy tight. Uh, then we're going to put our needle valve and float in there just gotta align the pins here there you go and uh, one thing you want to do is you want to blow on this hole when it's upside down and then you want to blow on it when it's this way so the way it works is when this is pointing down the float is supposed to uh, have fluid in there and if it gets too full it'll push the float up and it will stop the fuel of fuel so it doesn't flood so the way you test that is you put it upside down and it's not supposed to let air in like that and when you put it upside down it's supposed to allow air in like so so that's good last thing we got to do i'll leave that to the side so i'm gonna need the rag here i'm gonna clean up your bowl best way you can just to remove any traces of oil gas. It just turns into this varnish-like material. Okay, so last thing, we're gonna put our O-ring back in there. Don't forget to do that, because you're gonna have leaks everywhere. Actually, I wanna clean the outside of this. That does not look like I cleaned it. So let's take care of this guy. The position of this drain valve right here is very important. And on this specific generator, the way you know that is this is the throttle and this is the choke. The choke faces the outside. So you want this to be about there. Okay, kind of lined up with that. So that's where I'm going to put it at. Put a little screw here. Make sure you have your seal right there, your little gasket. And go ahead and tighten this. Okay, so that's the carburetor. Carburetor is clean and is good to go, and this generator should run fine. Actually, now uh, before you go ahead and put this back together, I want you to pay attention and check something out uh, whether this valve this is the throttle the way you know it's because it's connected to the motor right there uh, sometimes when these generators get dirty and sit for a long time old fuel goes inside this shaft and it just makes it really stiff to move and if that happens that little motor won't have the strength to break it loose and after I check this one it's really stiff see it takes a lot of force to move this around so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best to free it up. It's not an easy task. So you want to carefully spray some brake clean on there and the bottom. And what you do, it's really fun. 
insert a screwdriver on the top and you open and close, open and close, open and close and you will feel it get lighter and lighter see that? so I'm going to do that a couple more times make sure that the crud falls out okay so you go on the top again careful not to pull that plastic piece out and you're going to go back and forth back and forth to where it's really light and same thing with the choke you want to make sure the choke is loose the choke is fine on this one but i've seen both of them stuck you see how easy that moves now that's exactly what you want so now we're going to go ahead and put it back together okay guys so now that the carburetor is clean uh, before you go ahead and install it uh, you want to take a look at this valve right here and the first thing that you want to do is drain the nasty fuel that's inside this thing if you could only smell it and probably if you're watching this video your gasoline smells disgusting smells like anything but gasoline so now that we have our fuel line disconnected right here i have a gas tank ready and i have this hose right here and what i'm going to do is very simple i'm just going to put this hose inside the other one and i'm going to open the valve and let the fuel drain okay so i got that connected all the way to the gas can probably gonna have to work on the hose but check out the but look at the color of this fuel when i open it i don't know if you're able to see but it's like a yellow color and like i said guys here you can see it better here look at that that is disgusting so this is gonna be a little while because it has to gravity fall all the way to the gas can but that's okay i got time so i'm gonna leave this here probably go and have lunch and when i come back i'm gonna flush some fresh gas from up there until i see fresh gas coming out once i see that i know that the carburetor will get fresh gas and it won't get that stuff because if you skip this step this dirty gas is going to go in your freshly cleaned carburetor and it's going to cause problems again and you may think well i just cleaned the carburetor but if you put dirty gas in it you're back to square one so make sure you do this step when you're cleaning your carburetor if your generator has been sitting for at least six months or more this is very important drain the old gas so it looks like all of the fuel has drained out of the tank and I want to show you guys one last step that I like to take. So you're going to grab a 10 millimeter and you're going to stick it down here at the bottom of what it's called a sediment bowl. So this is for dirt and heavy stuff to stay on the bottom and you definitely want to pull that and when you look at that, here, let me pour some of that, you see that? It's like a it's like mud in there this would be going in your carburetor if you don't check it so what I'm gonna do guys I'm gonna spray some brake cleaner in here and we're gonna get it nice and clean reinstall it flush some gas and we should be able to put everything back together there you go guys I don't know if you can see but we have that fresh gas that I poured up there. We got it draining out nice and clean the way it should. So that means that our fuel system is actually working. It's flowing good, clean gas to our freshly clean carburetor. So if for any reason, when you open your valve with the carburetor disconnected and there is no fuel coming out of this line, but there is fuel in the tank, what you need to do is you need to pull this nut right here and well first you need to disconnect that plastic piece for the valve opening and closing uh, you need to take this nut off and this whole assembly will fall out and there is a screen that goes inside the tank that screen might be dirty in this case it's not too bad because luckily uh, this brand of generator has a plastic tank and actually plastic tanks are better than steel tanks because they don't rust inside with the water they just keep it all floating in there um, so in this case we didn't have to take that out but look at that nice fresh fuel flowing that's gonna basically flush the tank and uh, it's gonna keep nice fresh gas in here so I'm dumping all that gas into here and what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna dump it inside my dirty oil can that I usually take to the auto parts store to get rid of the old oil like you should please be responsible with your gas don't be 
leaving the gas anywhere just take it to the auto parts store but mix it with oil first because they're not going to let you dump gas anywhere so just kind of secretly pour it in your dirty oil from your car oil change and whatnot there you go that's all the gas and you should be good from there all right guys so we have our carburetor here looking like brand new i sprayed the outside of it with some brake clean and of course we clean the inside so now it's time to reinstall this carburetor but the first thing we have to do is put the stepping motor back inside of here so let me show you how to do that all right so you have your carburetor here and our little stepping motor and as you can see the shaft is not round it's actually keyed it's got two flat sides and we have to match that to our plastic piece in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert it like so gently okay and then I'm gonna go in the bottom here and I'm gonna match I'm gonna match that best way I can yeah there we go when we turn this we turn the shaft of the motor so I don't want to be too aggressive with that I'm gonna leave it right there the that looks good to me excellent so then we're gonna put our screws back in okay so next up i'm gonna test the fuel flow one last time so i added a little bit of gas to the generator and i just want to make sure that the fuel is getting there so i'm just gonna open and close it real quick yep there's fuel right there so now i'm gonna set the camera over here i'm gonna put this back together real quick Insert it like that. We're gonna put our choke mechanism back in. I wouldn't say the most difficult part, but you wanna slide your carburetor out. You wanna insert your choke pin in there, and then you line up the holes, like so. Okay, the way you can test it is you can hold this right here, and you can push and pull the choke. So once you put it on there, before you put the box in, just test your choke. See, it closes all the way. That's what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, the box next. So next we're going to insert this gasket right here. Make sure you match and you put it the same way it was. It has some kind of design so make sure you match that with the choke plate. Now we're going to insert this box. So that completes the installation of our carburetor. We have cleaned the plastic tank, we have cleaned the carburetor, we have checked the sediment bowl and everything is working as it should. If you do have a generator with a steel tank and when you look inside you see that it's rusty, I have a video on how to fix that and I'm going to link it somewhere up here. Um, basically there is a way that you can clean up the tank and maybe save it so that's what I'll be showing in the other video so in this video you learned how to clean and restore the fuel system on an inverter generator but this works for a lot of generators the only one it doesn't work for is diesel generators but as long as it's gas carburetors mostly work the same so thank you for watching this video of immortal engines I hope it was helpful if you like this video please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to help the channel thank you so much I'll see you on the next one